Hello student, I am Ambrose, your chemistry master. In this session, I am going to explain the thermodynamic principle of metallurgy. We already know that a metal oxide can be reduced to metal by using some reducing agent. Consider a metal oxide MxOy which can be reduced to metal by using some reducing agent. <clears throat> so, for this reduction, we can use two types of reducing agent. So, reducing agent 1, we can consider carbon as reducing agent for this purpose. If carbon is used as reducing agent, carbon either converted into carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. Carbon either converted into carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. We can also use another reducing agent which is otherwise no, nothing but your carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide also can be used as reducing agent for this reduction. If carbon monoxide is used as reducing agent, carbon monoxide is oxidized to carbon dioxide. Carbon monoxide is oxidized to carbon dioxide. Now, we can use carbon, either carbon or carbon monoxide as reducing agent for this reduction of metal oxide to metal. But in actual fact, we cannot use both carbon as well as carbon monoxide as reducing agent simultaneously for a reduction of metal oxide. So, we have to neglect any one of the reducing agent, either we have to neglect carbon monoxide or carbon for this reduction purpose that is we can we have to select any one of the reducing agent any one of the reducing agents for this reduction purpose so how do we select how do we select the reducing agent which has to be used for this reduction purpose that selection is based on thermodynamic consideration the selection is based on thermodynamic consideration. That is what the thermodynamic principle say. So, what is the thermodynamic consideration? So, we already studied that for a spontaneous or feasible reaction, delta G value is very, very important. In order to feasible of a reaction, in order to be feasible for a reaction, the delta G value should be negative. That is, if change in free energy value is negative, then the reaction is said to be a spontaneous reaction. Change in free energy value should be negative for spontaneous reaction. We know already all spontaneous reactions are feasible reaction. All spontaneous reactions are feasible reaction we know already. So, this is the thermodynamic consideration. This is the thermodynamic consideration. So, what does it mean? If you are reducing the metal oxide MxOy with either carbon or carbon monoxide, we have to couple both the reaction and the net reaction should have change in free energy value in negative. That is, if you are considering this as equation number 1 and this as equation number 2 and this as equation number 3, by coupling, let this be equation number 1 and this be equation number 2, this is as equation number 3 and this be equation number 4. We have to couple the reaction 1 and 2 and 1 and 3 and 1 and 4 for this coupled reaction for these three coupled reaction we should get the delta g value as negative for these three coupled reaction that is coupling the metal oxide with the reducing agent carbon and metal oxide with the reducing agent another carbon in which car carbon is oxidized to carbon dioxide 
and metal oxide should be coupled with the carbon monoxide and this coupled reaction should have net delta G value as negative. So, from this we can conclude that the reducing agent is selected in such a way that the change in free energy is large negative or more negative for the reduction of metal oxide by reducing agent or the reduction of metal oxide for the coupled reaction. Understood? Understood? So, this is the thermodynamic consideration. This is the thermodynamic consideration. What is the thermodynamic consideration? The delta G value should be negative in order to be a reaction spontaneous. As I told you earlier, all the spontaneous reactions are feasible reaction. In order to have a feasibility or spontaneity of a reaction, so we need to couple the reaction 1 and 2 and reaction 1 and 3 and reaction 1 and 4. For that coupled reaction, the net change in free energy value should be negative. Then only the reduction is possible. Then only the reduction is spontaneous or feasible reaction. So, the reduction, reducing agent is selected in such a way that the coupled reactions have more negative value for the change in free energy. The coupled reaction should have more change in more negative value, more negative free energy change for this reaction. Understood? Is it clear? Is it clear? Now, we know already change in free energy, we know already change in free energy which is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Change in free energy is delta H minus T delta S that we know already. Now, here delta H is nothing but change in enthalpy. Delta H is change in enthalpy and T is temperature here. Temperature in Kelvin and delta S is change in entropy, change in entropy. So, this is a Gibbs free energy equation that is delta H G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. For equilibrium process, for equilibrium process, for an equilibrium process, for an equilibrium process, delta G0 standard change in Gibbs free energy is equal to minus RT L and K. So, this is the equilibrium for equilibrium process, the standard change in Gibbs free energy is minus RT L and K. Delta G0 is equal to minus RT L and K. So, why do we write here this equilibrium reaction? So, why do we use here the equilibrium reaction equilibrium reaction here? So, why do we use that this formula that is delta G0 is equal to minus RT L and K? Why do we use? So, there is a meaning. So, what does it what does it mean? What does it mean? Harold Ellingham. Harold Ellingham Harold Ellingham used this equation in order to select a reducing suitable reducing agent. Harold Ellingham used this equation that is delta G0 is equal to minus RT L and K 
to calculate delta G0 value, delta G0 value for reduction of metal oxide to metal. Understood? So, why did he use this equation? Why did Harold Ellingham use this equation that is delta G0 is equal to minus RTLN K? Why did he use? He considered the reduction of metal oxide as an equilibrium process. He considered the reduction of metal oxide as an equilibrium process and hence he used this equation to calculate delta G0 value for the reduction of metal oxide by some reducing by using some reducing agent and he plotted he, he has drawn a plot by taking temperature in the x axis by taking temperature in the x axis and delta G0 value in the y axis. He has drawn a plot by taking temperature in the x axis and delta G0 in the y axis. He has plotted a graph by using temperature in the x axis and delta G0 in the y axis and he obtained a straight line. He obtained straight line. He obtained straight line for the reduction of metal oxide by some reducing agent. And that straight line has a slope value as delta S and Y intercept as and delta H value as Y intercept. So, once again I repeat, why did delta G0 values used here? Why did he use, why did Harold Ellingham use delta G0 is equal to minus RT ln K equation for this purpose? Because he considered the reduction of metal oxide by reducing agent as, a, as an equilibrium process. As a reduction of metal oxide by metal is considered as an equilibrium process, he utilized that equation and he has plotted a graph by taking temperature as x axis and delta G0 value in the y axis and he got a straight line with a slope value delta S and y intercept delta H. <coughs> So, what is now? So, I am going to explain what is Ellingham diagram. What is Ellingham? One module, sir. Customer. <laughs> I was class later the lamentary. I am a character and background. I love He got his uh, Harold Eldingham plotted a graph by taking temperature in the x axis and delta G0 in the y axis, and he obtained a straight line with a delta S as slope and delta H as Y intercept and that graph is called as Ellingham diagram and that graph is called as Ellingham diagram. So, what is Ellingham diagram? What is Ellingham diagram? Ellingham diagram is the graphical representation of variation of change in free energy 
of a reaction for the formation of metal oxide with a temperature is called as Ellingham diagram. So, what is Ellingham diagram? So, this is very important student. What is Ellingham diagram? The graphical representation of variation of change in free energy of a reaction for the formation of metal oxide with the temperature is called as Ellingham diagram. So, what is Ellingham diagram student? What is Ellingham diagram now? So, Ellingham diagram is nothing but a graphical representation. The graphical representation of variation of change in free energy. The graphical representation of variation of change in free energy of reaction for the formation of metal oxide with the temperature is called as Ellingham diagram. So, now we are going to discuss the Ellingham diagram. Understood? Did you understand did you understand the thermodynamic principle? What is the thermodynamic principle now? What is the thermodynamic principle? The reduction reaction should have change in free energy value negative. If more is a negative value, then the reaction is feasible or spontaneous. If more is a delta G value, if more is the delta G value, the reduction reaction is spontaneous or feasible. That is what is here considered. 